Hello everybody. Hello everyone, this is Richard Cespedes and uh I'm here to talk about uh the I'm I'm here to discuss more about how beauty is nothing more than uh a, <clears throat> a construct of an era. It's a manifestation, it's a it's a self manifestation and it and it um it varies from person to person and um like um just like I said in the other video um specifically like people are um people are only beautiful for specific eras you know um the their flavor of the you know how there's like the flavor of the month and flavor well the thing is though is that in in decades and specifically in decades there's flavors of the year and we don't know we 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 don't realize it but the first time that we become attracted to a Hollywood star or someone in high school or whatever, after the first year of being attracted to them, subconsciously our attraction deteriorates. We don't know it, but, it's, but subconsciously our attraction deteriorates because um, whether we like it or not, we're, we're in a self-manipulative self -manipulative state, constantly in a self-manipulative state. And what that means is that we create and manifest trends even in attraction, attraction is nothing more than a trend that varies from era to era and decade to decade and year to year and month to month or whatever. We do that because um, that's just how the human race is. I mean, we're stuck on a planet Earth. We have nowhere to go. We're stuck on planet Earth. It's like a twilight zone. We don't realize it, but we're in a, stuck in a twilight zone type of uh, um, situation. We're stuck on planet Earth. We can't go nowhere. So what that what 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 that does to the psyche of the human race, you know, is that um, it affects the way that we think of our environment and others. We're stuck in isolation in ourselves, and we create uh, certain concepts and constructs of ways to entertain oneself and perpetuate oneself to feel good and and, and exist. And um, specifically for beauty, beauty is nothing more than a construct of the era, construct of each individual that varies from individual to individual. Now, beauty, if if I were to break down beauty into um, ingredients, so to speak, um, parts, separate parts, what makes up beauty? What is beauty? Beauty is nothing more than a a self a self per, a self projection of others, psychological self projection of others. Is nothing more than um, than um, one's emotional one's emotional um, um, state, an emotional state. It's an emotional state. It's self projecting onto others. It's an emotional state of the person. It's 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 how the person projects their emotions onto other people that creates a sexual. Or loving attraction onto other people um, it's more situational it's more constructed it's more of a it's more of a um, of a trend type of aspect it's not really something that is real it's more of like a it's a self ma a self manipulative self manifested manifested uh, manifested um, inner inner created inner working um, um, construct of what the human brain does like beauty is nothing more than than um the self projection the self projection of oneself onto someone else their environment how they feel like people that fall in love with actors and actresses it all depends on how they feel within the the era of their life how their emotion plays a part and how they perceive other people and their in reality how they perceive other people in their reality that's what that that's what attraction is is nothing more than the, per, the the projecting of oneself and trying to perceive and trying to um, dissect and trying to place meaning into your reality placing meaning into people by one self projection by you know each each individual has a certain way of how they feel of themselves it, it, it all depends on how the person feels of their self within that era, how they feel of themselves, how they interact with their environments, what problems, what situations they have, 
is how they project a certain way of um, being attracted, trying to find someone that they feel like, yes, this person is perfect because of these, because subconsciously we don't really think about it, but the way that we become attracted to someone, it's already, um, we, we construct that attraction, we construct it within ourselves, you know? And beauty is nothing more than a construct of one's projection of their reality trying to trying to make meaning and trying to create and manifest happiness by uh, isolating separate things into a box. Beauty is this, okay? So that makes sense. Now I have order in my life. So beauty is this, okay? So style is this, okay? So there's two things I have order in my life. Let's say, okay, and now, um, what is happiness? Happiness is these two things, style and, and love. But I only like these kinds of love. You know, I only like this. Okay, okay, so that's what I like. And But the thing is, though, is that, and now this is the thing. Uh, you know, we, you know, um, when you're young, a, a teenager or in your 20s, we always, we always have an idea of what we want, right? But then when you get older, as times change, trends change, trends and times change, then our perceptions of how we perceive our reality changes. And how we perceive others in that reality is how we then reconstruct our what we find attractive. Styles, clothing, colors and all of the you know, uh, fashions and what to wear and certain seasonal things. It's all one thing. We don't realize it, but beauty is nothing more than a construct or a manifestation of a trend for each era of a decade. It, it's not real. And, 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 and it's exactly the same thing as fashion. We don't realize that. We just live every day. It's subconsciously manifested eternally in the psyche of men and women. And also, too, um, before I forget what, I, what I'm going to say next, back in the... 1800s to the early 1920s or in 1800s more likely and the early 1920s uh, and and uh asia men used to like women that would crumple up their feet they will crumple up their feet so it looked like a fist i remember hearing that in some geographic or something like that they would have pressure put on the feet and it would become the foot would become crumpled and pushed and deformed, deformed, so it becomes like a fist. The foot it will become like a fist. It will become crumpled up. That used to be like something that was very attractive. But now, times change. Time, why did times change? Why is it that the perception of beauty changes? Because each individual's existence in their life changes. Their emotional state, the problems that they have, some problems go away, other problems come. So their emotional states, if, if, if an emotional state of a human being was clay, it shifts and morphs into a different shape. Different errors have different shapes and different morph uh, manifestations. So your state of how you are and how you feel and your health and your mental health, it all, it all shifts and changes in financial, uh, financial well-being and whatever. It all shifts and changes every decade because people's perceptions change and lives change and the, uh, the, the, the landscape of life itself changes just like a trend. But we don't have to live that way. People choose to change the landscape. Why? Because we're unhealthy emotionally. Trends exist because we think we need them. But why do we need them? We think that we need new things, but there is nothing that's new. There really is nothing that's new. The only thing that, that's new is what we perceive as new, but there is nothing that really is new. The only real progression is non-progression. Animals in life and nature, they don't need new types of furs, or they don't need their fur to change color every year, or they don't think about, hmm, I wonder if there was something different, or, you know, I wish the grass would turn purple for, for a change, or the water would be, you know, uh, uh, turned to yellow, you know, they, they never think of, oh, well, we need new things, they just live and exist. The reason why they don't question things is because they're healthy emotionally. People need new things. Human beings need new things because we're unhealthy emotionally. And those trends 
that happen for those eras and decades, they occur because we make them occur, but they occur because they're, they're only there for a temporary fix. Trends, new clothes and jackets for every new decade, new style of new music, new projections of uh, new perceptions of beauty, because they're temporary fixes of the of the underlying problem. They're not the cure for the problem. The real cure for the problem, the real problem is an ultimate cure. Real progression is non-progression. That's what the human race has to understand. Trends are nothing more than temporary fixes. New shoes, new styles, new perception, new new music, new new beauty. There's nothing more than temporary fixes. What we have to do is we have to realize that we need to be healthy emotionally. When you're healthy emotionally, when you're healthy physically, when you eat correctly, you don't think about new trends or new styles or new things like that. We think of new trends, new styles. Why? Because we want new things. But there is nothing new. We want new things because we want to fix something that's the problem in us. The problem in our emotional state. The problem in our health state. We're emotionally uh, uh, broken. And so we, we try to create new things. But we get bored. Why do we get bored? Because we're unhealthy. If we had better health and better uh mental situational states and different emotional states and different interactions with better interactions with people we would live better we would we wouldn't demand new things for temporary fixes trends are nothing more than temporary fixes perceptions of beauty is nothing more than temporary fixes what we have to do is we have to think of of trends as no trends we have to realize that the way life is is what it is the way life is is what it is boredom the boredom of our reality is the bliss. We have to acknowledge that. The nothingness is bliss. We have to acknowledge that. The quietness, the nothingness, the boredom of our reality. We're already heaven on earth. We're the ones that are creating the problem. We're the ones that are creating hell within ourselves and within the world. The nothingness of our reality is the bliss of heaven. We're already on heaven. We're, we're, we're the no the nothingness is the peace, and the peace is nothingness. The nothingness that happens is the peace. You have to accept that. Stop creating problems. And I'm saying this to all the human races. There is nothing new. The only thing that's new is probably science, scientific advancement, scientific thinking. That's what's really new. But trends and styles and clothing and perceptions of beauty, that's all petty stuff. We're, it's all stuff for temporary emotional fixes. We need to look for ultimate permanent emotional fixes not temporary trend fixes that's what the new millennium should be about the ultimate trend fix forever the progression the only real progression is non-progression because in reality there is real no progression <clears throat> in terms of um petty trends and all that stuff so we have to start to um fix ourselves emotionally and get more better <clears throat> we have to go into a different way of, of living. Beauty is nothing more than a trend, a construct of the era. It's nothing more than a concept. And a concept that changes from decade to decade and era to era. That's what beauty is. Nothing more than that. We have to realize that. We have to find the ultimate end. The ultimate end. And we have to realize that. Cause, because the reality, the boredom of reality is is, is already heaven. You know, we don't really have threats as human beings. We don't have threats. If you're bored at home or whatever, then you should be happy because there's nothing happening. You should be happy that there is nothing happening. What do you want? Do you want aliens to come down and destroy us or, you know, talking all wildly? You want aliens to come down and destroy the planet? Do you want zombies to rise up on the floor? And you probably won't even survive that. You'll probably survive and you'll be maimed and your legs will be broken. You'll be unhappy, even more unhappy than before when there was nothing happening. You see, you have to you have to be content of how, where you're at and what you have, instead of demanding for new things to occur. You should be content for what you have because if you demand something or if you create something, then you don't know where that problem is gonna go and you don't know how much more of a problem you're gonna be in afterwards. You might be worse off causing a, a slight problem than having nothing happen. That's the truth. That's what the human race has to realize. The nothingness is the ultimate uh, peace. We have to realize that and we have to let it go. 
We have to stop con uh, constructing internal turmoils of ourselves and try to just find the peace within our own individual uh, selves. Science is probably the only progression. That's probably the only progression. All those, and one other thing that I want to add before I leave. All the emotional problems that you have in your life, all the emotional trauma, all the emotional, um, all the social problems, all the different problems, different problems that happen, just remember this, it'll always pass. It's just like, you have to think of it as like a movie. You know, it's unrealistic, but in a way you have to think of it as a movie. These things always occur, but you don't live forever, and you're going to end up dying anyways, and everybody's going to die. These type of problems, they never last forever. Just let it go. You may, em embarrassment, that's one thing, embarrassment. Embarrassment of not doing something right. Embarrassment of not dressing correctly. Embarrassment of not having enough money to pay for your friends. Embarrassment of not lo looking nice. Embarrassment of not having a home. Embarrassment of this and that. Embarrassment is ter temporary. Embarrassment is nothing more than uh, something that you create. It's, something, it's nothing more than what you create in yourself. The embarrassment is what you have in yourself. Let it go. Embarrassment is nothing but, but social pettiness. Embarrassment. To acknowledge another person to, to not have when they don't have enough. That's social. That, that's a social problem. People should just let go and just not worry about being embarrassed or, or being petty of other people. That's, that's social pettiness. To say, oh, well, that person doesn't have any clothes. You know, you don't have nice pants. Well, what are you doing? Or, you should comb your hair or things like that. The reason why we analyze people and people analyze us is because we're emotionally unhappy. We're trying to escape our own unhealthiness by projecting and analyzing other people. Because we're unhappy with ourselves mentally and emotionally and physically. That's what I'm talking about. Those types of, of social things need to pass away. We can't continue on forever. We can't go, keep on going like this forever. Normal trends and normal music trends, they can't go on forever. It's all fake and it's all watered down. We have to change to the ultimate end. The ultimate peace. We can create it or we can continue it. This is Richard Cespedes. It's all I got to say. Thank you for watching. I don't want to make the video too long. Just think about what I said. <coughs> I know I went on more than what I talked about beauty, but beauty is nothing more than a construct of an era. It's not real. And beauty, if broken down in ingredients, is nothing more than a projection of one's emotional states of that era. Each person's era, from the past to now, or the future, their project, their, how they perceive beauty is how they projected themselves, how they feel of themselves at that time. Beauty is nothing more than the self-projection of one state of that era one's mental and emotional state of that era and how they project that and how they want to categorize what beauty is. They want to create limits, but then they don't want to have limits at the same time of what they project as something that is beautiful. <clears throat> so beauty is nothing more than a self-projection of one state of that era and how they feel of themselves, how they feel of the environment, and how they feel of social matters of that time and how they feel in personal lives and how they feel mentally and physically how they project themselves uh, confidently and all these other little elements beauty is nothing more than that nothing more than a trend and a concept of the problematic existence of the self -manip self, -manip self manipulative constant construct of the human race that we have individually in each era so that's what beauty is nothing more than a concept of each era nothing more than a trend because we create that trend And it's not real. We used to, in, the, in the 90s and 80s, we used to like uh, white people. Now they're not so much. Now it's more people of dark skin. People want, back in the 90s and 80s, we wanted, we, everybody wanted blonde hair. Now not so much. Now we want dark hair. You see? Nothing more than trends. It's not that simple. It's also emotionally attachment to that. And this is Richard Cespedes. Thank you for watching. Please think about what I said. And uh, I think these things will come re real in a few years, few decades. These things will become fact. Richard Cespedes, thank you for watching.